RICO is a federal law that was primarily used in the 1970s to fight against organized crime in the U.S. The law prohibits individuals or an organization from participating in organized criminal acts as part of an ongoing criminal enterprise, aka a gang or a mob. Those criminal offenses can include murder, money laundering, robbery, and more. To convict a person of a crime under RICO, prosecutors must prove two or more instances of racketeering that occurred within a 10-year time span. In recent months, more and more rappers have been indicted for violating the Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations, or RICO, Act. The first rapper on the list is K. Flock. Kevin Perez was born on April 20th, 2003, and is known professionally as K. Flock. He's an American rapper, a Puerto Rican, and Dominican descent, hailing from the Bronx. He began his musical career in 2020. He rose to fame through a variety of singles, most notably Shake It. K Flock is facing more legal issues. He's now been indicted on federal RICO charges. According to the indictment obtained by XXL, authorities are accusing the rapper and seven other people of running the Bronx, New York based Sevside DOA gang. The group faces multiple violent charges, including attempted murder and assault with a dangerous weapon arising from seven shootings committed in the Bronx between June 2020 and February 2022, according to the indictment. In all, K Flock is now facing charges of racketeering conspiracy, murder in aid of racketeering, use of a firearm resulting in death, attempted murder, and assault with a dangerous weapon, in aid of racketeering, use of a firearm for attempted murder, and assault with a dangerous weapon. K Flock's attorney, Jeffrey Lightman, released the following statement to XXL about the new charges. We're not surprised by the federal charges as we've been fighting Kevin's state murder charge for over a year now. And considering the shooting was a clear act of self-defense, it wasn't a particularly strong charge. The statement reads that it's now being used as a basis for a possible death penalty charge is extraordinary. On video, it's crystal clear that Kevin was about to be shot after attempting to walk away from his attacker. Only then did Kevin use a weapon to defend himself and another from an armed, violent gang member who was about to pull out a loaded gun in his hand. K Flock turned himself in to face a murder charge on December 23, 2021 in connection to the shooting death of Oscar Hernandez, 24, who was shot and killed outside a Bronx barbershop on December 16, 2021. Some of the incident was captured on surveillance. Initial reports claimed that K-Flock confronted the victim while he was getting a haircut inside the barbershop. Hernandez was then said to have walked outside where an argument ensued with K-Flock and Hernandez was shot. However, video of the incident shows K-Flock walking past the barbershop with what appears to be a young kid with him. Hernandez then exits the barbershop and appears to follow K Flock before he's shot off camera. Now, the rapper has additional problems on his hands. He faces a mandatory life sentence in prison if found guilty of the federal charges. Rapper Fetty Wap has been sentenced to six years in prison. His sentence is for his role in a drug trafficking conspiracy that took place in parts of Long Island and New Jersey. Fetty Wap, whose real name is William Jr. Maxwell II, pleaded guilty in August to conspiracy to distribute and possess cocaine. Because of the plea deal, he was able to avoid a life sentence had he been convicted. Willie Jr. Maxwell II was born on June 7, 1991. Better known by his stage name, Fetty Wap, is an American rapper and singer. He quickly rose to mainstream prominence in late 2014 after his song Trap Queen was released as his debut single for 300 Entertainment, an imprint of Atlantic Records. The song peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. Chris and Lori, it, it's a minimum of five years to a max of 40 years in jail. Willie Jr. Maxwell II, better known in the rap world as Fetty Wap, pleaded guilty to conspiring to distribute over 500 grams of cocaine. Now, take a look at this video. It's a story we've been covering since the beginning. The rapper was arrested back in November. He pleaded guilty to distributing and possessing cocaine back in 2020. Now, some of the distribution taking place right here in South The rapper was one of multiple defendants charged and found guilty of being part of an organization that distributed more than 100 kilograms of cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, and crack cocaine in Long Island and New Jersey. He was arrested at New York City City Field, home of the Mets baseball team, shortly before he was scheduled to perform at a concert there in October 2021. Maxwell was initially released on bond, but has been in custody since August 2022, when his bail was revoked. He later pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute 500 grams or more of cocaine. In addition to jail time, he'll also be responsible for fines and a min minimum of four years of supervised release. Maxwell has been behind bars since his bail was revoked a few weeks ago when the government learned about an incident that allegedly involved him holding a gun up to the phone during a FaceTime call with another person threatening multiple times to kill them. Now, prosecutors say the proof in the original case was overwhelming. The minimum sentence for such a charge is five years. On Wednesday morning, 
U.S. District Judge Joanna Sabert sentenced him to six years imprisonment and five years post-release supervision, according to a news release from the U.S. Department of Justice's Eastern District of New York. In March, Sabert sentenced one of Maxwell's co-conspirators, New Jersey Corrections Officer Anthony Sinchi, to 72 months in prison for his role in the crime. The other four co-defendants, Anthony Leonardi, Robert Leonardi, Brian Sullivan, and Kavon Wiggins, have all pleaded guilty and are awaiting sentencing. According to court filings, the six men distributed drugs between June 2019 and June 2020. The narcotics were obtained on the West Coast and then driven or mailed across the country to Suffolk County, New York. Wiggins, Sullivan, and the Leonardis participated in the purchase and transportation of the illicit substances, according to the court filings. From Suffolk County, the drugs were distributed to dealers who operated on Long Island and in New Jersey. Sinji allegedly transported kilograms of cocaine from between the two regions. Maxwell was described as a kilogram-level redistributor for the organization. Search warrants executed during the investigation found about $1.5 million in cash, 16 kilograms of cocaine, 2 kilograms of heroin, fentanyl pills, and multiple firearms. Rapper Boozy had something to say regarding Fetiwop's arrest. In his interview, with Vlad, he made his opinion. Have you, have you seen this happen, where, where people start going back to the streets when the rap money starts slowing up? Uh... I've seen people, you know, on my, my, in Louisiana, you know, I, ain't, I can't speak for others. I know Fetty Wap the rapper, you know. Yeah. I don't know no drug dealer, you know, like that. But uh, of course, yeah. I see a lot, a lot with local rappers, and you know, especially with local rappers, you know. Uh, Cause once you spend all your money, and, and uh, you gotta go back to what you know. Once you spend all your money, especially if you ain't made no money off the money you try to make off the music, you know. And uh, I see a lot, a lot of happen with. I see it more happen with artists that's not at the top. Another American rapper named Young Jock in an interview with Vlad also gave his opinion why some rappers turn to selling drugs. You you accumulate so much income when you're hot. And as you, even though you're not hot anymore, that's still residual income that come in. You still do shows, you still got a face card, you still can do, you still can touch money. But once you start realizing you don't have that same pool or leverage with your face card, you might not be broke to the average civilian, but to the top rapper or to who you used to be, but you're falling off. In this statement, he believed that some rappers turn to selling drugs because they believe they've fallen off. As a nigga go do five, six shows, Fetty, I'm sure Fetty could still get 20000 a show. But that ain't enough for the lifestyle he created. Can't keep up. So you like, I'm going to take my last. I'm going to put it here. I got my little cousin them, my little homie them. Shit, I don't got to touch this shit. I'm going to make a play, buy some bags, put these niggas on. We got straps, we good. Brooklyn-based rapper Casanova has officially been arrested for his alleged gang involvement. The rapper surrendered to police at the Midtown South Precinct in Manhattan last night. Earlier this week, authorities indicted 17 other alleged members of the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation gang for several charges, including murder, racketeering, and narcotics. That includes the murder of a 15-year-old in Poughkeepsie. Caswell Sr., who was born on October 27, 1986, and is known professionally as Casanova, is a Haitian-American rapper. In 2016, Casanova made his first original song, Don't Run. He signed to Rock Nation. In 2020, he was indicted on RICO charges alongside 17 others due to various criminal activities in which his Bloods gang, Untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation, allegedly participated. The rapper Casanova was sentenced to more than 15 years in prison on federal racketeering conspiracy and drug charges related to his involvement in what prosecutors called a vicious street gang. A New York federal judge sentenced the artist to 188 months in prison after he pleaded guilty to one charge under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, as well as a charge of conspiracy to redistribute over 100 kilograms of marijuana. Brooklyn-born rapper Casanova pleads guilty to federal racketeering and drug charges. The U.S. Attorney's Office claims Casanova led the untouchable guerrilla Stone Nation Bloods Gang and directed a multi-state conspiracy in that role. Casanova copped to a shooting and a robbery and a trafficking more than 100 kilos of pot. He faces between five and 60 years in prison when he is sentenced in December. The allegations even included brazen fraud for exploiting benefits programs, providing assistance in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In May 2022, Casanova pleaded guilty to the RICO conspiracy charge and the drug charge, among other things. He admitted to participating in a July 2020 shootout at a crowded Miami house party in which he personally shot a man, leaving the victim seriously injured. Ahead of his sentencing, federal prosecutors requested a prison term ranging from 188 to 235 months, calling Casanova a high-profile gang leader who had amplified the message of the gang through his music, helping to recruit a generation of new members. He didn't simply pretend to be violent in his music or on social media, the government wrote. Unfortunately, he walked the walk. Senior's offense conduct 
is not about a few song lyrics or how he marketed his music. Rather, he carried out an array of violent activity and significant narcotics trafficking that benefited some of the gang's most violent and impactful members. Casanova's attorney argued that he should receive a sentence well below those guidelines. They said he was not involved in the gang's daily activities and had begun to distance himself from the group as his music career took off, including having denounced gang life in some public statements. The fact is that Mr. Sr. stayed in the gang as it furthered his rap career, Casanova's lawyers wrote. As he gained moderate success and then a recording contract with Rock Nation, he increasingly separated himself from the gang's activities despite remaining a member. In a statement of Billboard, Casanova's lawyers, James Kosoros, said he and his client were gratified that the court acknowledged the productive messages that Mr. Sr. had been given against gang life over the past several years and sentenced him to the lowest end of the guidelines. Caswell Sr. is not just a notorious recording artist, but he's also a high-profile leader of a vicious street gang and a magnet for gang violence, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said in a statement after the sentencing, adding that Casanova's stature had helped the gang recruit and expand nationwide. We're back with an I-Team exclusive. Renewed scrutiny on escalating violence at the Essex County Correctional Facility after a former New York City rapper who was awaiting sentencing on federal drug charges. While in prison, Casanova got involved in a serious altercation with another inmate. This left him badly injured. The charges last year was involved in a vicious fight yesterday at the Essex County Correctional Facility in Newark. These internal reports from correction officers say Senior was slashed with a weapon by another inmate, Ulysses Lugo, and then chased him down with the help of others. We spoke with one officer who responded to the scene. I mean, Lugo, you couldn't see his face because he was saturated in blood. You couldn't see it at the time because his whole face was saturated in blood and his whole uniform was saturated in blood. Inmate Senior was sitting there and blood was just coming out. Of Apparently, Casanova got slashed in the face by the other inmate named Lugo. Just, uh two shifts a day. I'm doing everything that you can, from a correctional administrator handbook, done. And then On December 1st, 2022, another rapper named Hood Rich Pablo Juan was sentenced to 15 years in prison for his alleged role in violating the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act as part of the Rolling 20 Neighborhood Bloods. Sterling Leroy Penix Jr. was born on October 28, 1988, and better known by his stage name, Hood Rich Pablo Juan is an American rapper. He's best known for his track, We Don't Love Him. Hood Rich Pablo Juan has reached a plea deal in his Georgia Rico case after being sentenced to 15 years behind bars. However, Pablo Juan's deal means he'll only serve five years years behind bars, and the rest of his remaining sentence will see him on strict probation, which will ban him from associating with any gang members or possessing handguns, per TMZ. The former 1017 signee was arrested in Upson County, Georgia, in October 2020 as part of a larger gang investigation on RICO charges and was denied bond, so he should be eligible for credit on his time served. He was among 46 alleged co-conspirators facing an indictment on 92 counts of the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, 59 counts of violations of the Georgia Street Gang and Prevention Act, 3 counts of trafficking methamphetamine, 3 counts of trafficking heroin, 4 counts of kidnapping, 4 counts of murder, and 24 counts of aggravated assault. The 33-year-old has stayed busy while incarcerated as he's released 3 new projects since being locked up in 2020. Most recently, Hood Rich Pablo Juan teamed up with Lil CJ Casino for their Hood Rich Casino project. On May 4, 2021, the AP reported that YFN Lucci was among a dozen other individuals charged in an Atlanta Rico indictment targeting alleged blood gang members. Here, an Atlanta rapper among a dozen others indicted on racketeering charges as part of a massive gang crackdown. And that is our top story. Police say the charges are all related to the Bloods gang activity spanning over a decade. The 105 count indictment put forth by a Fulton County, Georgia grand jury on April 30th, 2021 consists of an array of charges, including racketeering, aggravated assault, murder, gun, armed robbery, property damage, theft, and gang related charges. YFN Lucci, born Rayshawn Bennett, was specifically charged with racketeering, violating the state's anti-gang law, felony murder, aggravated assault, and possession of a farm during the commission of a felony. Additionally, according to Atlanta Police Department Chief Charles Hampton, the case stems from a six-month investigation. The indictment alleges that the 12 people involved have ties to subgroups of the Bloods gang. Along with the aforementioned gang connections, the defendants are accused of committing crimes that protected and enhanced the gang's reputation, also allowing them to gain and maintain control of territory. The indictment also notes that one of the Bloods subgroups, known by the YFN initials, is based around Lucci. YFN Lucci's case is ongoing. 
The Georgia bred rapper has been behind bars since turning himself in for an unrelated murder charge in January of 2021. To rapper YFN Lucci was sentenced to 10 years in prison. The rapper, whose real name is Ray Sean Bennett, pleaded guilty to one count of violation of the Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act. He is one of a dozen men indicted on racketeering and RICO charges back in 2021. The group's charges are related to alleged involvement with the Bloods Street Gang. According to court documents, prosecutors could write a letter to the parole board recommending release when eligible, but records show he has been in jail for nearly three years. Okay, let's get a check. I want to say my heart goes out to my friend James Adam and his family. Um, also, I want to apologize to my family and my friends for putting them through this stressful process. And I would also like to apologize to the court. And that's it. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Bennett. Uh, let me do Another rapper on the list is Young Thug, who's known for his hit song, Bubbly. Only Channel 2, by the way, was in Buckhead Monday night as police arrested the rapper Young Thug, whose real name is Jeffrey Williams. We showed you this exclusive video on WSB Tonight at 11. Young Thug, who was born Jeffrey Williams, was arrested in May 2022 and charged along with 27 other people, including rappers Gunna and Yak Gotti, in a sprawling indictment spanning over 90 pages. And Young Thug isn't the only local rapper who is facing charges in this indictment. Uh, Gunna also is being charged with racketeering. Rapper Young Thug will appear in court this morning. The rapper, whose real name is Jeffrey Williams Jr., was arrested Monday on a 56-count racketeering indictment. That indictment alleges his YSL record label is a criminal street gang that has committed murder, assault, and threats of violence. Several defendants took plea deals last December, including Gunna and Young Thug's older brother, while others were severed from the case for a number of reasons, including representation issues. In early May of 2022, 28 members of Young Thug's Young Stoner Life Collective were arrested on RICO charges. The 56-count indictment included charges of armed robbery, participation in criminal street gang activity, murder, and more. Among that two dozen-plus individuals were South Atlanta native Gunna, whose real name is Sergio Kitchens, who has been publicly affiliated with the alleged blood set about six months after the initial arrest, which also put rappers like Slime Life Shawty and Nun Funk behind bars. Gunna took an Alfred plea and walked free for the time being. The Alfred plea was created for defendants who do not admit guilt, yet agree that prosecutors have enough evidence for a conviction. He was sentenced to five years with one year of time served. The rest of his sentence has been suspended. When news that Gunna would be released spread, the platinum selling artist issued a statement, which in part read, nothing will stop me from chasing my dreams. I won't stop being a good person, even if some unnamed and unknown accusers want the world to see me as a bad person. When I was free, I was good and kind to the community around me, and when I'm released, I'll do the same thing all over again. Six defendants, including Young Thug, are still facing trial. He remained in custody since his arrest. The indictment says its members identify themselves by using hand signals, tattoos, and clothing with YSL or slime written on them, and often wear red for bloods, green for slime. In court documents, prosecutors argue the rapper is a violent gang leader and have alleged examples they say prove it. Among them, he threatened to shoot a security guard in the face. He had flashed the gang's alleged hand signal numerous times, including in his social media post, and he rapped about the criminal group. Prosecutors also allege members of the gang had discussed getting Young Thug's permission to kill rapper YFN Lucci, the alleged leader of a rival street gang. Young Thug's defense attorney has vehemently denied the accusations and pointed to a different side of the rapper's life. In a bond hearing last year, one media executive and longtime friend of the artist testified Young Thug was put here to change the people around him. Kevin Lyles also testified in favor of Young Thug. Kevin Lyles was born on February 27, 1968, and he's an American record executive and co-founder and CEO of 300 Entertainment. Kevin Lyles and Young Thug have known each other for over 12 years and have been business partners. The Jeffrey I know, the Jeffrey I know gave me the clothes off his back. Music industry veteran Kevin Lyles said, A 15-year-old boy testified the artist tutored him, took him along on tours, and urged him to stay away from crime and drugs. Corey Jackson also took a step further to explain to the court how he met Young Thug and what the relationship was. He also told the judge that Young Thug has taken him on some of his tours to different parts of the country, of course, with his parents' permission. I told him, my YSL means young successful life because that's something that he has created. Team Corey Jackson told the judge, Young Thug grew up in public housing in a South Atlanta neighborhood long known for its poverty and violence and went on to become one of the industry's most innovative and influential hip hop artists pushing not just musical boundaries, but often cultural ones too. 
including his decision to wear an iconic purple dress for the cover of his 2016 album, Jeffrey. Prosecutors say that the YSL gang began in 2012 in the area of Cleveland Avenue, near where the rapper grew up. To support the allegations of a street gang, prosecutors listed more than 180 acts in the indictment that the group of defendants allegedly committed, dating back to 2012, including murder, aggravated assault, armed robbery, carjacking, drug sales, theft, and possession of firearms during the commission of a felony. Among their evidence, they also cited social media posts, hand signs, clothing, tattoos, and song lyrics. Young Thug was initially indicted for conspiring to violate the RICO statute and participating in criminal street gang activity. And in a re-indictment filed in August 2022, prosecutors charged him with additional counts related to gang activity, as well as drug and firearms violations. The additional charges stem from a search warrant executed by authorities at the home the rapper was staying in, where drugs and firearms were allegedly found. Steele told WXIA, Young Thug is charged with eight out of the 65 total counts listed for the defendants. Among the more serious accusations against them is that he rented a car in 2015 that was used in the murder of a rival gang member. The fatal shooting was carried out three days later by YSL gang members, according to the indictment. The other defendants still facing trial include Markavius Huey, DeMonte Kendrick, known as Yak Gotti, Juan Marvius Nichols, Rodalius Ryan, and Shannon Stilwell. Other defendants pleaded guilty to various charges in December 2022 prior to jury selection. Young Thug's older brother, Quantavius Greer, known as Unfunk, pleaded guilty to one count of violating the RICO Act and one count of theft by receiving stolen property, according to CNN affiliate WSB. Trontavius Stevens, known as Tick, also pleaded guilty in December to a RICO charge as part of a negotiated deal, acknowledging he was one of YSL's founding members and that associates of the group committed crimes. Defendant Antonio Sledge, known as Munk Tunk, pleaded guilty to one count of conspiring to violate the RICO statute and a firearm charge. In court, he acknowledged YSL as a criminal enterprise, and he committed several crimes on behalf of and as part of the group. He also acknowledged he received money from Young Thug to lay low, according to prosecutors, several days after the fatal shootings of the rival gang member. With this, we've come to the end of this video. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. See you in the next video.